Daniel here for Tabletop for One. Please join me at the table as I teach and play through Wild Child West. And I thank you for joining me for this tutorial and solo playthrough of Wild Child West. Wild Child West is the latest game by Paul Denon. You would know him from uh, Dune Imperium. It's also published by the same company, Dire Wolf. And uh, I pre-ordered this game and it just came today. And I've played it a few times, so I thought I might as well go ahead and record a uh, solo playthrough of it. Now in Wild Child West, you are going to be building out your cities here. You have different towns you can build out on your player board. And you're going to be choosing tiles and trying to score the most points. Well, let's go ahead and get into the setup here. And so for the setup of the game, well, first of all, after punching everything out, you're going to have to sort them in these little trays. Uh, they all have their printed tile here that uh, reflects the tile that goes in that spot. But after you've done this, you're actually, for the solo mode, you're going to have to remove one of each tile. So you'll be removing a total of 40 tiles, and you'll just put those back in the game box. You're not going to be using those for solo play. If you plan on doing solo play regularly, just keep those out of these trays. And so you'll set up the trays like so. You'll have the one that says one to two here, and this one that says three to four here. You'll have those on top of each other. And then the other one here, five to six, on top of seven to eight. And then over here, you're going to go ahead and place out the score tracker here. You'll randomly place out the four bottles here that are going to be giving you bonuses. It, it says to go ahead and place them out for your first game like so, where you have the alley tiles here, little brown tiles there. This one's with the gold nuggets on it. This one has the bullets and this one has bonus points. So we're going to do that for this game here just to simulate a first play game. And then you're gonna put your score marker on five points. And the reason for this is, is you can actually lose points in this game. So you start out with five points to prevent you from going below zero. And then you're gonna go ahead and take this little cart marker here. You're gonna set it on this X. This will be the starting round of the game. You're gonna go ahead and choose one of the maps here. Now there are eight, map total, eight maps total and there are actually double sided and they provide different experiences and different abilities. You'll see this one has a bunch of saws on it and it tells you an ability that it has. Once you've gotten used to the game, then I would suggest go ahead and try out the advanced sides. But for this playthrough here, we're just gonna use the regular side here. You're also going to take one of these trackers here for the mining and you're going to set this off to the side. I don't have room on the camera here. I guess for right now I can place it right here until I build out that direction. Assuming I do, then I'll have to move it. But for now you can see it here and you're going to go ahead and take the marker and you're going to set it at the very bottom here. You're also going to take the bandit card here, the bandit ridge. You'll set it right here. And then you're going to shuffle up the bandits uh, deck here. This is the AI deck. You just shuffle this up and you're going to set this to the side, to the left side of the bandit ridge here. All of your resources here are going to be off to the side, as well as these little bandit tokens here. And then, of course, all the alley tokens here. Those will all be off to the side. And then you're going to also set off to the side these four cards here. We may gain one of these during play. I'll show you if that happens, but the main way that you can gain this is through the fancy saloon card. And so it depends on whether or not I end up buying that, uh, that tile. And if I do, I will gain one of these cards, but we'll see how that goes. But otherwise, these just get set off to the side. And then you're going to go ahead and take the partner cards here. You're going to shuffle these up. And then what you're going to do is you're going to draw two of them. And these, uh, you're going to choose one of these to start with. And so these here, they offer end game bonuses. And so this one here says keep out bandits. So if at the end of the game, you only have two to three bandits alive on your board, you'll gain six points. If you have one bandit, you'll gain 13. If you have zero, you'll gain 19 here. This one here says cows and pastures that have at least one cow poke. The cow poke is the uh, brown boot token. And so you'll count up cows in those pastures. And if their totals meet these criteria, you get those points. For me this time, I think I will do, do the marshal. Or maybe I should do the cow poke and just focus on pastures. That's a, that's a tough choice. The other one will get shuffled into the deck, so there's a good chance I can get the other one. I think for now, 
I will do the bandit. So I'm going to set this here and then you'll go ahead and you're going to shuffle this up again and then you're going to draw three cards and these will serve as cards that you can choose from when you reach a certain level on the mining track here, the one with the, the hat. And so I'll show you these three cards here that I'm going to have to choose from and then I will set them aside. You won't see them. They'll be off screen until I choose one to keep. And so we have the judge here on the right that says a sheriff alive in each town. So that means we have sheriffs placed on the board. So if I have it in three towns, I get five points, four towns, 12 and five towns, 19 or mines surrounded on all sides. And so two or three to four mines or five or more. And then building tiles that are four or more squares, two to three, four to five and so on. And so those are going to be the three that I can choose from later. Uh, again, I'm going to have these off to the side. I'll tell you which one I choose when we get to that point. So the rest of these here can just be put aside. We're not going to be using these for the game. Now, before I get started on the rules, I kind of want to just go over end game scoring and end game scoring. You have these handy dandy guides here that give you both. And so in game scoring, is when you complete a town and you complete a town by covering up all the dark blue sections on the board of a specific town. It's got the town name on the side here and it's got the amount of points that you gain for building that town. If you complete a town during the first year, which is the top row there, you'll see it gain an extra eight points here. If you complete it during the next year, you gain an extra four points instead. Third year, it's two points. And the last year you don't gain any bonus points. So that's one way to gain in-game scoring. There's wrangling and wrangling is when you have a set of cows and you decide to wrangle them, you'll place a brown token and then you'll gain points on this tracker here. There's, uh, it depends on how many cows you wrangle. So if there's three, you'll gain three points, four, four, five, you'll gain six points. Six will gain you nine and seven will gain you 12. Seven's the highest, but you can keep gaining those bonuses over and over again. The only thing is, is these bonuses here, whoever goes there first will gain the, that bonus and then they flip over and it's a lesser bonus for gaining this again. So just keep that in mind. And then there's a tussle. I'll go over the tussle later. The tussle has to do with the bandits. So I'll go over that in a little bit. But here's the end game scoring. This is important to know at the beginning of the game so you know why you're doing what you're doing while you play. All right, so you lose points for every horseshoe on your board that's not covered up. You gain points for some of the pink buildings. There's different pink buildings that do different things like the chapel here will gain you an extra point per gravestone you have on your board. The ranch here gains you points for cows and the stables here gives you an extra eight points if you've covered up all your horseshoes. So those are the three pink buildings that we have in the game. If, if we get to that point of, of using those, I will explain them a little bit better. But you also get two points per gravestone on your board. You get points per hand of cards that you have. And so there are cards that you can get. I showed you the four cards earlier, the four aces of different colors. There's also tiles on the board here that give you uh, aces. So this is a red one here, a green one here. There's a blue one up here and there's a yellow one up here and there's more. And so the way you score points on that is if you have three of the same color, you'll gain six points. Or if you have four of the same color, you gain 12 points. If you have three different colors, you'll gain six points or four different colors, you gain 12 points. And uh, you're able to score multiple times. It's just each card can only score for one set. And then the next one here is the mining track. You'll notice on the right here, there are some numbers on the right. We had two, five, 10 and 15 points. And so wherever your mining token is at, at the end of the game, we'll score you points on that track. So that's a good way to score points. And then the last one here is your partner bonuses. So the points from the cards that you have. And so that's how you score end game points. And that's going to determine how you play the game and what you do on your board. Because right now I have the marshal. And so if I really want a lot of points, I'm going to have to kill all the bandits. And so I'll, I'll go over that too in just a moment here. All right. So the, the tempo of the game is that you start with an income. You'll see these mining carts on here. So when there's a mining cart and the tracker is on that, that spot, you'll have an income. You'll look at your mining track here 
and it tells you on the left hand side wherever your marker is how much gold you gain. So at the start of the game, you're gonna go ahead and gain two gold. So I'm gonna just set these on my board here, I have two gold. And later on in later years, you could gain three, four, or five gold. Now there is an exception here. On the fourth year, you can either take your gold income or take two pickaxes. And what pickaxes do is they move your tracker up that many spaces. So if you gain two pickaxes, it'll move it up twice. And so you have that option for that final year spot. And I'll look over that again when we hit that final spot. But the next thing is you have the drafting phase of the game. And this goes on for a while. You'll see up here, there are arrows here, and these indicate all drafting uh, rounds. And in, in, it includes the uh, starting round here, the one with the X. So for the first year here, you're gonna draft one, two, three, four, five tiles total. Next year will be four, third year is four, and the last year is three. Basically what happens is you take two green dice and one blue die, you can ignore the other extra dice in the game, and you're gonna roll these dice. And so they're gonna come up with numbers here. And so we have a 20 and you're gonna slot it in where it goes. So I have a 20, a one here is gonna slot in in this corner. And then a four here, the blue one, they always slot in on the blue slots here. And so at this point, this tells you what you can draft. And so what I can draft here is the closest tile to this die in the same row. And so this is the closest tile right here. And this one over here, the 20, says I can draft this uh, bank tile here. I can't skip over these tiles with the green dice. I have to always draft the one that's closest. Now the blue dice are something different. Now the blue dice are work on the columns, okay? So the four here, can draft this tile here. Or if you want, showing this gold symbol here, you can spend one gold to skip a tile and go to the next one and take that one. And in fact, you can skip another one and so on. Now, some of these tiles cost gold themselves. So you have to be careful when you're skipping, you may not be able to afford what you're skipping to, but some of these tiles here will show a gold symbol along with a yellow bar here to indicate how much gold it costs to pick up that tile. So the ranch house here takes two gold, the cash here takes one, and the fancy saloon takes two and so on. Now, there are a variety of buildings that you can choose from, and they have different colors, and that, that tells you something about what they do. Now, the blue ones automatically give you something when you build them. So, for instance, if I built this cache here, I would gain two bullets, as shown on there. If I built uh, this saloon here, the saloon would give me a green card at the end of the game. It's a virtual card. You don't take it from the stack of cards. But if I build this fancy saloon, you, I get to choose one of the cards from the stack of cards and add that to my inventory for the end of the game. And so there's a bunch of others as well. And I'll basically go over them if I encounter them. Now the red ones, they give bonuses, but you have to build completely around them in order to gain that bonus. And it only has to be around their sides, not diagonally adjacent, but around their sides. But the general store gives you different resources. You can choose either two alleys, two bullets, or two pickaxes. The town hall gives you 10 points and the bank gives you three gold. The yellow ones do different things. Some of them give you an ongoing bonus like this one here, the barn says that when you wrangle, you'll get a, gain a gold for wrangling. And then there's the sawmill. This one's an interesting one. So you build this one and you're gonna place it with this arrow side up first. And then sometime during a later turn, instead of drafting one of the tiles on the board, you can flip this over to the check mark side and draft any tile on the board. And so it gives you that nice option there. And so then we have the wheel right here. The wheel right can do one of two things. You can have it on either side, you choose which one. And what it offers is on this side here, anytime you gain an alley, you can actually gain two alleys that you put right next to each other. Or instead, you can just gain two different alleys and place them wherever you'd like according to placement rules. So you gotta decide when you build this one which side you want it on. There's other ones too, like the hotel here that gives you extra points when you win a tussle. Again, I'll talk about tussles in a minute. And we talked about the pink buildings, so that's it for buildings. 
All right, let's talk about all the other symbols. So there's a variety of symbols on the board, on the tiles that give you certain bonuses and whatnot. The ones you want to watch out for are the bandits. And so the bandits, when they're on your board, they're gonna count against you during a tussle. And so let me go ahead and talk about tussles. At the end of every year, you're gonna end up on one of these tussles here. So there's one here, 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 and here. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna compare your live bandits to the AI's live bandits. If you have more live bandits than the AI, then you lose the points shown. If you have less bandits than the AI, then you're gonna gain the points shown, but then you have to add a bandit on a hill to your board. And these hill bandits will end up on one of the hill symbols here, not one of the mines, but any one of the empty hill symbols. So they'll have to be dealt with later. So you definitely have to be careful of adding bandits on the board. Now the way you deal with bandits is you use sheriffs and you use bullets. So you, you'll gain bullets as you uh, place certain cards like the cash or others, or if you cover up a bullet symbol on your board, you can add these to your inventory unless you already have a sheriff lined up to shoot a bandit. So let's say I had this tile here. I have a sheriff here on it and it's in line of sight with this bandit here. I would be able to then, if I had a bullet in my inventory, place it on the, the bandit here, and now it's a gravestone. And so that bandit's dead and doesn't count towards tussles. And so that's how you eliminate bandits. Now, sheriffs cannot shoot through cows or hills or mines or buildings, so keep that in mind. But they can shoot through other bandits. But if there's a bandit on a hill like this one is, it can't shoot through that bandit to some other bandit because that hill is blocking the line of sight. Now, anytime you cover up one of the mine symbols here, you can just gonna go ahead and increase your mine tracker one space. Anytime you cover up a gold bullet or alley token, you're gonna go ahead and gain those. Now the alley tokens have to be placed immediately. And again, if there's a sheriff in line of sight with a, an alive bandit and you gain a bullet, you have to shoot that bandit immediately. All right, so the last thing I wanna talk about are the cows. So if at any point you decide, let's say I had this here, I just placed this, let's say, and I have five cows here. At this point, I can decide if I want to wrangle those cows. And so if I want to, I just place one of the wrangle tokens on there. And now this whole herd of cows, these two included, are, have been wrangled and any other cows that get attached to it. So at this point, I compare my total number of cows to what is displayed here, and then I gain the points and the bonus. So in this case here would be six points and uh, two gold because this one says five cows. Now, if I add any more cows to it, let's say after I wrangled this one, I decided to add this one here and now it's connected this whole field together and I've added one more cow to it. That cow is already wrangled because of this cow poke here that shows that it's wrangled. And so you don't really want to add to an already wrangled group of cows. You'll want to separate those groups and try and make new groups so you can score those again. Now you do have to decide if you wanna wrangle when you place the tile, so keep that in mind. Now one thing to note though is you can wrangle for an amount less than the actual amount of cows. So in that case where I had five, if I wanted this bonus instead, I could wrangle for four, but you get less points. So you have to make that decision. All right, so I think we're ready to get going here. And so we're gonna talk about tile placement here. It's very simple on how you place tiles. Okay, the first tile has to cover this X here. That's gotta be your starting point. And every subsequent tile has to be next to orthogonally adjacent to another tile that you've placed. Not diagonally, so not corner to corner, but orthogonally adjacent to. You cannot place though over any of the printed cows on here, the mines, the hills. You can't place over any of those. So keep that in mind. So my first choice here is I'm, I'm looking at this one here. I like the fact that there's a card on it. And so I think I'm gonna go ahead and take this one. This one doesn't cost any gold since I'm taking the one nearest to this die and we'll place it right here. It's gonna cover up that X. It doesn't cover up anything else, but the reason why I'm placing this here is I'm gonna try to later place a sheriff 
in line here at this corner so it can shoot this one and this one. Hopefully I can do that and we'll see what happens. Now that I've chosen that die, we go ahead and collect our dice and then we're gonna move along this track here going to the next spot. Now, anytime you reach a cactus, what is gonna happen is you are now gonna draw an AI card. So let's talk about how those work. So we draw an AI card here. And what it shows you is a variety of things. It can show you bandits, it can show you cows, or it can show you bullets. And so right now, it shows two bandits and four cows. So what's going to happen here is the AI is going to look to see if it can score one of these wrangle bonuses here. And it has to be one that hasn't been flipped over yet. So again, the flip over side only shows one resource. So none of these have been scored yet. And so it does have four cows and this one hasn't been scored. So what's gonna happen here is the AI is gonna go ahead and wrangle their cows. So you just place it on the far right cow there to indicate that anything to the left has been wrangled. And then you go ahead and flip this over. So now if I gain this bonus later, I'll gain a lesser bonus and not a greater one. And any face up unkilled bandits here will count towards the tussle fight at the end of the year. And we'll go over that when we get to that point. And so now we're ready to roll again. And we've got a 16 in the green, a four in the green, and a four once again in the blue. So this one here is kind of nice. It's got two cows on it. So that's good for making a nice herd of cows. I don't think I want that one though right now. I could always go for this one again, you know, and get another yellow card. That might be nice. But this one here is calling to me. It's got a sheriff on it and it's, it's got a pretty good placement. It's going to cover a decent area. So I think I'll go ahead and take this one. Now the question is, where am I going to put it? And I think I'm going to flip it over here and place it like this. Now it's going to cover up the gold there. So I'm going to gain an additional gold. On top of that, at this point, if I gain a bullet, I can shoot that bandit. So... I don't have any bullets yet, but we should be able to get one pretty soon. And so we retrieve all the dice. We're going to move the minecart up one space and we're ready to go again. And so we're going to roll here and we have a seven. So seven there and then an eight green and a nine green. Once again, there's some tough choices. I do think I want to get this one. <laughs> I know it's adding a lot of bandits early on, but I also get a green card. I get a gold for this. So you get what's on there. So I get gold and I think I can place it right here. It's going to cover up a bullet. So we gain a bullet and we'll place it right here automatically killing that bandit. Then we gain a gold. And so now I'm up to four gold. And now if you notice, I've covered up the majority of Pineapple City here. I only have one, two, three, and four spaces left. Now they do have to be the alley pieces to fit in these spaces here. So I will have to buy those or, or gain those. Now that brings up one point. If you don't want to draft a tile, you can draft one alley tile or two alley tiles, but those two alley tiles have to place, be placed orthogonally adjacent to each other. All right, so we'll remove the dice now and then we move this along and now we've hit another cactus here. And so we flip over another card and they've got more cows. So they're now up to three cows. Again, these four cows don't count anymore, but they also have four bandits. Now the three cows here, they're not going to score this here because it doesn't have one of the bonus tokens. All, they, all their uh, scoring does is block me from getting the extra bonus on those bonus tokens. That's all it's for. This is a blocking kind of AI. It's just for the tussles. It's just for the wrangling bonuses. That's it. You don't even score points for the AI. So we roll again. All right. We've got a 20 and a four again and a two here. Knowing that the AI is going to have four bandits during the tussle because they don't get another card until the next year. I'm not worried about gaining another bandit, so I do think I'll gain this tile here. Now, one thing you'll notice is once you've cleared out a tile, the next time you choose this number, you get to go to the next tile. And you get to go all the way over in the row, assuming you clear out those tiles. So it, choosing tiles will gain you access to other tiles later. Now, if I want to place this one, I can place it right here. If I place it right here, I cover up one of these alley tiles here. And I think that's what I want to do, but I'm going to flip it over here. That way, if I gain another bullet, this sheriff can shoot this bandit here. 
And I get an alley tile here and I'll just go ahead and place it in this spot here. Now we move on to the next turn. And again, there's no cactus turn here. So we're rolling the dice. <laughs> wow, a four again, it really wants the four there. But we have a six green and a 14 green here. Now I do like this 14 green. I think this is gonna work for me because if I place it like this, I'm gonna cover up a mine first and then I'm also gonna set this sheriff to be in line of sight of this bandit and this bandit. Again, I wanna kill as many bandits as possible because of this card here. And since I covered up a pickaxe, I get to move this up one space on the track. Now it's the end of this turn here, but we now move into the tussle. And so at this point, we count our bandits here. I have one, two, three, four, and we count the AI's bandits, one, two, three, four. If it's a tie, then what happens is nobody loses, everybody wins. So in this case here, I will gain two points because that's what the gain is here, but it tells me that I also gain one of the hill bandits. And now I'm gonna have to place this one. I'll place it right here. And that's gonna be in line of sight of this sheriff here. And then the AI actually gets one too because they won technically. So we add a bandit to this card here. And now we move this along here. And now since it shows a mine cart on the track here, we have our income. I'm gonna gain two of the gold pieces here. But it's also a cactus turn, so we have to draw another card for the AI. And this time they draw two cows. Well, two plus the three here is gonna make five. And that means they get to wrangle again because I have not wrangled any cows and nobody has taken the one for five cows here, the bonus. So we just flip this over and now I gain a lesser bonus if I go there. And to save space here, what I'm gonna do is tuck this card underneath here and just put the wrangle token here because the, I don't need to see that other card anymore. It doesn't have bandits on it. We're ready to roll again. This time we have a seven, a one, and a two. That's interesting. That kind of gives us some good options here. I really like this one. I really do. I like this one a lot. So I'm gonna take this one. It doesn't cost any gold. There's no gold around it. And we'll place it right here. It covers up a pickaxe, so I get to move this up one. I also gain an alley tile as shown on that tile there. And we'll place this right here. Now we move this along on the track here to the next round. And we've got a six blue, an eight green, and a 12 green. I do like this one here. It gives me another sheriff and a blue card. Cause right now I have a yellow and a green card. So now a blue card will give us three. And this is gonna cost me gold as you can see here. And so I'm gonna place it right here. It's gonna cover up another mine symbol and that'll be good. We'll move it up on the track and now I get to play, pick my last citizen card. And I don't know if this is the best one, but I'm gonna do the robber baron one where it's mine surrounded on all sides. So I'll take that one. I, I think I can accomplish that. I almost have three of them surrounded on all sides and that'll gain me 10 points if I, if I do that. All right, the next turn, we have to draw another cactus card here. And now we have some bullets. Okay, so when you draw bullets, you're gonna go ahead and place them on the cards. I'm actually gonna place one here and one here. It doesn't matter which ones you place them on, but since this card is now irrelevant, we've wrangled all these cows, we've killed off this bandit, I can actually cover up that card. It doesn't need to be shown anymore. And now they're at one cow, so they still gotta count up in order to block that again. I don't know if I'm gonna get many cows this, uh, this round or this game. I didn't do a lot last game, but let's see how this goes. And we'll roll. All right, we have an eight, a 14, and a nine. Oh, yeah, I have one more space to cover for Pineapple City, and I think I know how I wanna do it. I wanna gain this one here. It's gonna cost me one gold, which is no problem. I'm doing well on gold right now. And I'm gonna place it right here. And yeah, this will be a good spot for it here. It actually lines up some cows here. Now I have five cows. I could turn these in to score and gain six points and a gold, but I'm gonna save it up for this one and try and get the bullets because the bullets I need right now. So as of right now, let's see, we're gonna set this here and then I completed Pineapple City. So I gained 16 points plus four for the current year. That's gonna bring me to 27 total points. And we go on to the next spot here, rolling the dice. 
we have a five green, a 20, and a five blue. And so at this point, I'm gonna have to move this off the screen because I need to be able to see the side of the board because I think I'm gonna end up move building this way a little bit. Because right now, this is a good option for me. If I take this one here, it's gonna cost me one gold. And what I wanna do is I wanna place it right here. If I place it right here and then I decide to wrangle right now, I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cows in that spot. So I have a choice to make. Do I wanna wrangle for the nine points and the two bullets or for the total of 17 points? Well, since my marshal is all about killing off the bandits, I think the best thing for me to do is the nine points and the two bullets. And so we'll gain the nine points, bringing me to 36. We'll flip this over because I'm gaining the two bullets. And right away, I have two things I can shoot. So let's see which one we want to shoot. We'll shoot this one here. And I guess this one here. You'll see this sheriff is in line of sight of this one. This sheriff's in line of sight of this one. I still need a bunch more bullets. I need four more bullets if I want to really make an impact here. But now since that turn's done, we go on to the next tussle. And that's unfortunate because I still have one, two, three, four bandits. And the AI only has three bandits. So that means I lose the tussle. So I'm going to lose three points, bringing me down to 33. But the AI is going to gain another bandit to its bandit ridge card. And we move on to the next start of year, and that means we gain income. So I'm gonna gain three gold, and that puts me up to six gold now. But it's also a cactus card, so we have to draw another one for the AI, and it's, oh man, it's two more bullets. We can slide this under because we don't need to see it anymore. Now, just so you know, if you, the AI ever gains bullets and uh, it doesn't have any bandits to kill, it keeps those bullets in a supply until bandits shows up and then it shoots them. But uh, yeah, they've had plenty of bandits to shoot, but that puts me in a bad position because now I still have a lot more bandits for the next tussle. And I'll go ahead and roll. All right, we have a six blue, another 20. The game really wants me to get the bank here. I don't know that I want it. I think I will gain this one again. It's gonna cost me one more gold, but I wanna place it up here, maybe like this. I think that'll work. It covers up a bullet here. So I'll gain a bullet and I'll be able to shoot a bandit right away. This sheriff here is gonna shoot this bandit in this spot here. I still need a red card if I wanna go for four of the different colors of the, of the aces. So I may need to try and build a fancy saloon or gain this card up here or this one down here. And we move on to the next round and now roll. We have a one and 11. Ooh, that's a saloon and a two. Oh, that two's really nice, isn't it? A sheriff and a bullet. I kind of need that. I really do. And I think the best place for me to place it is down here. So I'll place it down here. That's gonna gain me one gold Gains me one pickaxe, so I'm gonna move my tracker up one space. At this point on the tracker, I'm still at a three income, but really all I care about is my end game points here. So right now I just have the two end game points. So if I get it up a few more times, I could have 10 or 15 points. That's gonna be the goal because I, I need to cover up mines anyways because of the robber baron card. And I also gain a bullet from this tile here. And let's see, we can shoot, I can't shoot this one. Or this, no, I can shoot this one here from this sheriff. The reason why I can't shoot this one here is because there's a cow in the way here. This sheriff cannot shoot through this cow to hit this bandit. So this bandit may be there the rest of the game. I'm not sure. There is a way to kill bandits you can't see or shoot, and that's through the sheriff's office. If I gain this tile here, I will gain a bullet and then as many bullets as I currently have in my inventory, I can shoot as many bandits as there are on my board. So that may be an option for me later. We'll see. And we're moving to the next round here, drawing another cactus card. And it's another bullet and a cow. Oh, that's unfortunate. They're down to one bandit left. And we roll here. We have a 13 this time, a six, a blue, and then a 20 again. <laughs> oh my goodness. I really wish I could jump over this tile to gain the sheriff's office, but you can't do that. You can only do that on the river, but I am half tempted to take this chapel here. 
So this chapel is kind of nice. It gives you an additional point per tombstone at the end of the game. Normally you get two points per tombstone, but this will give me an additional point. So if I buy this right now, that's worth five points because I have five tombstones on the board. And let's see, that'll cost me one gold. And I can use this to my advantage. I can place it here or here. Either of those places will help me surround a mine. I think I'll just place it here, gaining another pickaxe. And we move on to the next round and roll in the dice. All right, we have a two blue, a 17 green, and a 15 green. Interesting. Well, the 15 green is one I definitely want. It's got the red card on it. I don't think I have a choice. I'm gonna have to buy this one. It cost me one gold. And I think one of the best places is to place it here, or I could place it here. If I place it here, I can go ahead and wrangle these cows for three points. I don't know that I'm gonna add to it anymore on this side, but it also covers up this mine here. Now the mine's covered on all four sides. This hill counts. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Placing it right here, I will wrangle the cows and that'll gain me three points. That's gonna help offset about four points that I'm gonna lose on the tussle right now. And with that, we move on to the tussle with the AI having only one bandit and me having one, two. Am I only at two? That's not too bad, but I still lose four points. So that's gonna bring me back down to 32 points. But the AI will gain one more to their bandit ridge. And since this card is no longer valid here, all the bandits and the cows are wrangled on this card, I'm gonna go ahead and cover up this card in preparation for the next round here. All right, so we move on to the next year here. All right, so we have an income. We have a choice here. Now, we can choose two pickaxes and one gold or my income of four gold. I don't think I need that much gold, so I'm gonna take the one gold and take the two pickaxes that's going to bring me up to five endgame points on the mining track. I, I just need one or two more pickaxes to gain 10 or 15 points. So we're looking good on that. And then we have one last cactus card we have to draw here. And this will be the final one for the game. And it's two more cows. At this point, it doesn't affect anything because this tile has already been flipped over. So the AI is not gonna block anything else, but it only has two bandits for that final tussle. So if I wanna win that final tussle, I definitely need to deal with my bandits. And we'll roll for this round here. We have a one and we have another one. So what happens here is you just move it on to the next spot. So it goes to the two. That also applies, let's say if I place this one here and there were no tiles in this row right here, then you would move that die to the next spot. And then we have a six blue here. So I can't help but wonder if I should get the chapel again. It's gonna gain me another five points, maybe more than if I kill more bandits. So I'll gain this one here and I'll place it right here. Now I've covered this mine on all sides. So we have one, two, three, four mines covered on all sides. If I cover one more, I'm gonna gain a total of 19 points at the end of the game. And really I just need to cover this side here of this one. Moving to the next round, rolling the dice here. Got a one blue, a five green, and a 12 green. So I'm only gonna gain two more tiles by the end of the game here. So I have to really be careful which ones I choose. I, I think I'm gonna choose this one and I'm gonna place it right here. It's gonna gain me one more bullet and one more pickaxe, which is really good for me because that automatically gives me five points for the pickaxe. And then I gain a bullet and we can only shoot this bandit right here. Moving on to the next and final tile draft. So here we go, our final roll. We have a two blue, a 12 green, and then a 16 green. So I wanna buy the general store. It's actually not gonna do anything for me, but I'll show you this tile here. The general store here, it gives you uh, two alley tiles, two bullets, or two pickaxes if you cover up all sides of the general store. I don't have a position here that's gonna afford me that. However, if I place it right here, then I have a couple options. See, it'll give me an alley tile and I can place this. Oh, that's tough choice. I don't know if that was the best option or not. <laughs> well, see, if I place it here, that's gonna give me nine points from the mines because that covers that mine on all sides. We have one, two, three, four, 
five. Mine's covered on all sides, so that'd be 19 points. If I use that alley tile right here, it finishes the town, which gives me nine points. Either way, it's the same, so I think we'll just keep it like that. All right, so now we move on to the final tussle of the game. The AI has two bandits, and if I'm counting correctly, I only have one. So that's gonna gain me five points. One, two, three, four, five. And so now we're gonna go on to the end game scoring. And you just follow this as you go. First, you're gonna look for horseshoes and see how many points you deduct. So I have one, two, three horseshoes, so I lose three points. And then we look at our pink ticket items. And so this one gives me one point per tombstone. So is that one. I have six tombstones, so that's 12 points. So that brings me up to 46. And then we do the tombstones themselves, and that's two points per tombstone, so that's another 12 points. And that's gonna bring me up to 57. We'll go ahead and place this plus 50 here as a reminder. And then we're gonna look at the sets of cards. And right now, let's see, I have blue, red, green, blue, yellow, so it looks like I just have one set of four different kinds, which gives me 12 points. So that's gonna bring me up to 69. And next we look on the mining track and on the mining track here, it shows that I have 10 points. So that's gonna bring me up to 79. And then last but not least, we look at our partner cards. So first the bandits here, I only have one bandit left. So I gained 13 points out of that. One, two, three, and that brings me to 92. And then last but not least, we have the Robber Baron. We already know I have five mines. That's gonna bring me another 19 points. And that brings me all the way up to 111, if I counted correctly. All right, and so you can compare your score on the rule book here. And it shows you here that a sidekick is 50 or more, deputy is 90 or more, ranger is 110 or more, marshal is 130, and mysterious stranger is 150 or more. Well, I just got the ranger. I, I didn't think I'd actually get that far. I was looking at my my starting end game points, whatever I was at, like 37 or something like that. That was the low start, but I had a lot of end game scoring, so it worked out for me. And so there you have it. This has been a tutorial and solo playthrough of Wild Tiled West by Paul Denon. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comments below. Please also point out any rules errors I may have made. Please like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And if you'd like to support me on Patreon, I have a link in the description. And I thank everyone who has supported me thus far. And I thank you very much for joining me on Tabletop for One. Have a great night.